Hello students. Today we will see another topic and that is the continental drift theory. So Alfred Wegener had given this concept of continental drift and as, as a young scientist he was quite curious about the earth's continents. So this uh, in 1910 Mr. Wegener or Alfred Wegener he formed this hypothesis he stated that all the continents were once joined together in a giant landmass. And what did he name this landmass? He named this as the Pangaea. So this is the Pangaea as you are seeing. So the Pangaea was given to the name of the single landmass which was present around 200 million years ago. So at that time there was a single landmass and there was a single ocean which was called as the Panthalassa. So this is the Pangaea wherein all the landmass were joined together and then the Panthalassa, the huge ocean. And then this Pangaea started breaking up slowly. So you see this is a scenario around 100 million years ago where they have started breaking up. And this Pangaea was made up of two major parts. The upper part was called the Laurasia and then the Gondwana land. So over here you are seeing that how they have broken apart, they are breaking apart. That means, and over here, in around 70 million years ago, they have more shifted their locations or the drift, the continents have all drifted apart from each other after breaking up. And this is a scenario around 30 million years ago. So, uh, the, the supercontinent Pangaea has, according to Wegener, broken up into various separate continents through the theory of continental drift. So the, in simple terms, the theory mentions that the continents were once part of a huge landmass, single landmass, which has broken apart. And after breaking apart, they have moved or drifted to their present locations. So according to this theory, the continents have drifted apart from each other. So what are the specific areas where they have drifted? This drift has occurred in which areas? So one of the area is away from the poles, which is he termed as a pole flat. Pole flat means flight from the poles. This is a German word. Pole flat means flight from the poles, which means away from the poles and towards the equator. So one of the one of them, one of the direction was away from the poles and as you are seeing over here away from the poles and towards the equator they are moving towards the equator over here and the second one was the westward drift so he said that this westward drift is owing to the gravitational pull this pole flux was due to the centrifugal force the centrifugal force of the planet and this the because of the centrifugal force this caused this supercontinent Pangaea to break up and after breaking up this uh, part of the broken continent they moved away from the poles or pole fleeing towards the equator towards the equator so the reason was one reason was centrifugal force the second reason was the tidal energy of the lunar solar drag so according to Wegener, the second direction was westward. The continents drifted westward. For example, he gave the example of the Americas. Both the Americas, this is the North America and the South America, they drifted towards the west. And why this drift towards the west? It is because the moon and the sun, the lunar and the solar drag. That is the tidal force. Because of this tidal energy, or the gravitational force of the sun and the moon which results in the tidal energy so this tidal energy resulted into the westward movement now what are the evidences to prove his theory these are the evidences that he had given evidences from landforms evidences from fossils and evidences from climate now regarding the landform Maybe most of us have played in our childhood with jigsaw puzzles. So if you take these continents as jigsaw puzzles, then 
it is very invariable you can see that these puzzles are sort of fitting with each other like jigsaw puzzles for example the eastern part of uh, south america is easily fitting into the western part of this african coast similarly same condition is with this north america with that of eurasia part of eurasia so the continents if they are taken as jigsaw puzzles then we can easily see that they are easily fitting into each other so this was one of the evidences that he had given secondly he gave the evidence of the mountain ranges so over here in north america over here the mountain ranges the type of the range the structure of the range the nature of the rocks the age of this mountain range is almost similar or it is similar the age of this range is similar to this caledonian mountain range of the british isles so these are more or less similar so over here although this uh, atlantic ocean is separating both these land masses but we are finding similar nature of mountains in both the sides of this atlantic ocean and this nature is similar with respect to type rock type structure age etc so that means once upon a time this whole land was joined together and just like this over here and then according to wegener this got separated because of continental drift so a part of it got known as the appalachian mountain and then over here we have the caledonian mountain in the eastern greenland we have the eastern greenland mountain range so over here we have a range of mountain over here we have a great range of mountain and that is an evidence of landform then he gave the evidence of the fossils so over here we see some fossils what are the fossils the similar kinds of fossils similar nature of fossils have been discovered in various continents in the coastlines of various continents now all of us over here if you see we all know that south america is very far from africa similarly africa is very far from antarctica india is quite far from all these land masses same goes for australia it is also far from all these land masses but we are finding similar nature of fossils in the coastlines now for example there is flora this is a fern glossopteris fern this is found in the southern continents of australia it has also been found in antarctica and parts of india and then africa and south america now how is it possible that this kind of fauna glossopteris fern is present in various continents which are far apart from each other which are thousands of miles apart from each other so that means once upon a time according to wegener they must have been in a conjoined position they must have been joined because of which they could easily the tree could uh, the species this kind of species was found in the all this conjoined land masses similarly mesosaurus now mesosaurus here was found the fossils of mesosaurus has been found both in south america and also in africa again the same question how is it possible that both these continents being far apart from each other the same kind of uh, fossils have been found over here that means of course they were joined together according to wegener which helped the mesosaurus to travel from this location to this location because they were joined so they did not need to swim etc so they could easily travel uh, on land same goes for the these animals as well so these fossils were found in these land masses which makes wegener believe that this land mass over here were once a part of a single land mass same goes for lemurs now lemurs have been found also in india madagascar and africa of course this these areas are far from each other then how was lemurs how is lemur found in in spe, uh, specially in this zone how is lemur found 
especially in this zone. That means once upon a time, India, Madagascar and Africa were part of one continent or part of one landmass. Later on, this landmass drifted apart from one place to another. Because it was once part of a single landmass, that is why Lemurs was found in this earlier geographical position. If you see this part over here, these two parts sort of it can join with each other. Same goes to the part over here. They can easily get joined. Similar we find similar kind of joining in this zone. Then Wegener gave some climatic evidences. For example, glaciers. Now we all know or if you go through the theory of the fundamental concepts of geomorphology, then you will be knowing that earlier in the ice age, the ice was still 40 degree north latitude. But nowhere can we find ice or glacier evidence near the equator. Near the equator, ice cannot exist. But we are finding or Wegener found evidence of climatic evidences of the existence of glaciers near the equator. How was that possible? So it might be all this land mass might have shifted the location. Earlier they were in some other location close to the poles, but then they have shifted the location to this present location. So that means when they were close to the poles, this enabled the formation of glaciers and this enabled the landforms having various glacial evidences. And that imprint still today is present in the landforms, which gives evidence to the fact that once upon a time, they were at some other location, but then over time, they have drifted apart from that location to their present location. Also, we find glacier scratches. Now, these are the evidences of glacier scratches in South Africa. Now, glacier scratches, how is that possible in South Africa? That is not possible. So, when he looked, when Wagner looked at certain sections of the earth and their climate, he found that the landforms sort of do not tally with the climate over there. Now, this glacier scratches uh, being available in South Africa, this means that once upon a time, this entire region was in a separate location. And in that location, there was glacier was in abundant. And that imprint is still now in that present landform, even after that landform has drifted from that location. Also, why is there a huge stock of coal across the present day middle latitudes? Why do we find coal or delight or coral reefs for that matter in locations where it should not be? For example, coal. Now, coal is something which is which should be found in equatorial kind of a climate. But it is found even in the poles where Wagner described. So that means coal being found in uh, equator in the polar uh, regions or coal being found in the Antarctica ice cap or coal being found in North America or Europe or Asia Minor. This means because they are not equatorial climate, they do not have equatorial climate, they have temperate zones. That means once upon a time, these regions were part of certain areas where they had equatorial climate. And later on, and when they were part of that region which had equatorial climate, that time coal had developed. And later on, that region drifted apart from their erstwhile position to their main position. But still, that coal was embedded in the landmass. Similarly, we find coral reefs. Now, the remains of coral reefs, generally coral reefs require warm water to survive. But then having coral reefs in the North Pole region, that also supports the drifting hypothesis. That means the North Pole region, once upon a time, it was under warm climate. But then later on, they have drifted their position. Now, there are various modern theories also, which will support this continental drift theory. 
what are the theories the discovery of the mid oceanic ridges then the discovery of the sea floor spreading or the convection currents because of mid oceanic ridge what happens through the mid oceanic ridges if you uh, go through the sea floor spreading if you go through the plate tectonics theory then all these are explained over there so when there is mid oceanic ridges we find various lavas being emanating from this mid oceanic ridges and these will spread to either side when it spreads to either side the continental crust there will be movement in the continental crust and also there will be movement in the oceanic crust now when there will be movement in the oceanic crust or the continental crust that means there will be continent drift so you can go through the concept of sea flow spreading or the plate tectonics theory which is already there in the channel so over there you can go through it in details and then you can link how this aids in the continental drift theory similarly in 1950s the sensitive magnetic inclination samples were collected from magnetometer and they were collected from the deccan plateau region of the peninsular india and they showed amazing results and this magnetic inclination uh, confirmed the samples of this region they confirmed that the region had previously been in the southern hemisphere as proposed by wegener so these are these theories which are there they were not given by wegener they are the current theories that they are the modern theories so even in modern theories through various tools and techniques we are seeing that yes continental drift theory do exist even in modern times we are seeing that the mid african rift because of the mid african rift the somali lift rift uh, the somali plate and the african plate are moving apart from each other because of which again the continent is drifting away from each other so these are all modern techniques in modern technique we are also using satellite images so in through the satellite images we are seeing that how the present day continents are drifting away from each other and they can be recorded directly through various gps systems so these are the various evidences of continental drift theory as given by wegener and also the modern tools and techniques which we are employing to support this theory of continental drift theory so this was all about the continental drift theory